Alright guys and welcome back to Armored Warfare and today we're doing a tips and tricks video to see how we can improve your gameplay. That you might be a veteran player of the game, you might have come from alpha, you might be brand new to the game or you might have been playing the game for a little while but you're not quite up to scratch yet at the game. So I'm going to try and teach you some of the tactics and methods that I go through on my games. Just in general I've got two games here that will hopefully teach you some of the main pit bits to the game. So we're going to have a look at some sniping. We're going to look at some brawling. And we're also going to have a look at minimap usage. As well as other bits and around and about that. Always, always helpful. So if you're a new player to the game. You've just come out of World of Tanks or something. And you see this and you're like. Oh my god, he's driving a car. Yes, there are wheeled vehicles in Armored Warfare. And wheeled vehicles do have an advantage in themselves. They are incredibly fast. Very very fast. This ERC-90 will get me around the map very quickly. You can see I've spawned on the other side to where I want to go, but already picking up the speed to 80 kilometers per hour here, as well as coming up to 90 now. Artillery drops around in front. We missed that. We're going to use the superb mobility of a wheeled vehicle with the amazing gun of the ERC-90, which you'll see later on me put into good use in its sniping role. Good pen, good damage, good accuracy, and a good reload time as well. Come up here, overtake the Dragoon, another wheeled vehicle, you might be inclined to get that one for first. For its tier, it's very mobile, but we are a tier 5 and a tier 4 and 3 match. So we're going to park up, oh, okay, situational awareness there, a good first tip to know. I was not looking behind me, the Dragoon was coming up behind me, didn't expect me to stop, so I stopped, he rammed me. But we're using this bit of foliage here, and this tiny little gap to see through, and see if we can shoot anyone in the side if they're going to come round. Since we did get hit quick and early, we can set up our ambush position, and there we go. Guy comes round, quick 349 damage straight through his side. We are spotted, so we're going to come out. We don't want to sit in first-person view and try and reverse a wheeled vehicle. If any of you actually drive a car, you'll know what it's like trying to reverse while looking straight. And as you saw there, less situational awareness from me. I was panicking that the T-72 Euro was going to shoot me, which he did, but I wasn't looking behind me as I went back. So therefore, that Leopard 1 that came up behind me got stuck, and I couldn't really back up at all. And I got hit his side, jammed up against it, and then the T-72 hit me. There you go, Leopard 1 also not paying attention there. He's just backing straight up into me, not paying attention to what's behind him. Situational awareness is a massive bonus to your gameplay. If you can be situationally aware while playing... You'll be really, really well better off. You'll be able to see around you, see what's happening, what enemies are coming around, which direction to you, and most importantly, where your friendlies are in proximity to you. Because as you saw that, that Leopard 1, if I'd have sat there, he would have got stuck and shot straight in the top of the T-72 Euro and died quicker than he already did. But he was not paying attention to what's behind him, and so he rammed into me. I was luckily paying attention to what's in front of me, and yeah... I managed to get out of the way quickly. So, some sniping here. We are on a good ridge on top of the map. We have a very good position on this M60A3. M60A3 being a very strong tier 5 main battle tank with era. Now, I shouldn't really be fruitlessly firing at him here. You can see I'm sort of... Can I? Can I not? Can I? I was taking my time there on picking my shots because I'm not going to keep on pumping AP rounds into him. They're not going to penetrate him at that range. Quickly switch my target to the OF-40 because he's the guy that I could shoot and he was close to me. Making sure that I wasn't going to be spotted by using a little bush in front of me, which is also quite helpful. Another little trip, or tip should I say, not trip, a little tip, is that when you hit someone at range, if you're not spotted but you damage them, you render in. You don't get spotted as such saying, hey look, his fizzy milk and his ERC, but my model of my tank destroyer will appear. And if you watch where the shells are coming from, you might actually get a glimpse of where the tank is. And then you can fire back at them, because that will damage them, of course. It doesn't matter if they're spotted or not, you can damage them if you hit them. I've switched to heat rounds here as well, because a lot of the enemy vehicles are very, very weak. Two swing fires, two LY40s, an M109, two LAV 300s, and an AMX 10P Pack 90. Heat rounds are very, very effective against these vehicles. Now, what's the difference between an AP and a heat round? Or what's the difference between all the rounds, may you ask? So, an AP round is exactly what you would expect it to be. It's a fast, like, muzzle velocity. It's got high muzzle velocity, good penetration, mediocre damage, as such. Heat rounds have lower penetration, 
much, much higher damage, as well as a much lower muzzle velocity. As you can see, I can fire the round, and you can see the round sort of traject towards them. It doesn't fly straight. It has a trajectory. If you saw me firing at that OF-40 before, the round took at least a second or two to get to him. Because the AP rounds on this thing have a 1200 meter per second muzzle velocity. So the round will literally impact them as I fire. There's not much shell lead to go with that. The heat rounds, on the other hand, do require a bit of leading and a bit of judgment on your behalf to be able to hit. And don't fire them at ERA. ERA or composite armor have a massive shape charge multiplier on the armor. So what this means is, if the shape charge multiplier is times 2, for instance, and the armor thickness is 100 millimeters. Now, if that armor was exactly perpendicular to your shell the shell was coming in at 90 degrees that would mean the shape charge has to penetrate 200 millimeters of armor that's what the uh, armor modifiers are so you can calculate your relative armor thicknesses based on that swing fire has zero armor defense against my heat rounds and another little thing there is the aps of this aps is an active protection system what this will do is it will knock out atgms i'll explain atgms in a second but we're going to do some brawling here so 10p90, same gun as me essentially, but this guy is not really, he's not efficient in his brawling. So what I'm doing is even though I have a quick reload, I'm reducing the amount of time he has to shoot me. So I'll pop out, fire, pop back, and just before I'm going to reload, about a second before that, I'll come out. So I reload as I'm out, fire and come back. That reduces the amount of time I'm out there, which is a helpful thing when trying to brawl someone in a pop out situation. But going back to what I was saying about the APS... APS is a module that you can put on your vehicle. It might already have it on it as standard, but the some vehicles like the ERC-90 I'm playing here, you have to upgrade to it. What this will do is it will blow out an ATGM. I think the ERCs has infinite charges, but a 45 second cooldown. So an ATGM is a shape charge, but the ATGMs are a bit different to a heat round in the sense that you have to wait. You can't fire them on the move. You have to wait for at least one and a half seconds to fire them, and they you can like control the round where it's going you can fire it you can control the round where you want it to go and it will hit where your cursor is i'll just let you have a look at the stats while i'm chatting on but the atgms in general are much much more powerful than a heat round themselves that's why they have their own counter to them the aps so for instance the bmd4 a tier 7 soviet what would you call it afv it's got a 100 millimeter atgm or a 30 mil auto cannon so the auto cannon, yeah, it's, it, it does. It, it's a good auto cannon, yeah. But the ATGM, the 100 millimeter ATGM, it gets does 800 average damage with about 750 penetration. Compared to the heat rounds of some vehicles, the heat rounds have much lower penetration, whereas an ATGM has higher penetration and higher damage than a uh, heat round does, which is useful for large vehicles that don't have an APS system or ERA. You can easily completely destroy them with an ATGM but I don't have I'm not using them at the moment so I hope those brawling and those little tips there in that last game were very helpful so this game we're going to be talking more about situational awareness it's a very very useful thing to have it was only minor in the last game it was only you know we crashed into someone they weren't paying attention we did like 60 damage and it's it's useful not to do but 60 damage is not really going to do much at these sort of height is it could be helpful it might do something but yeah we're going to be doing doing more serious situational awareness so we're driving the expeditionary tank this tank you can't buy it was a founder's pack vehicle and it is a very very odd machine it's got an unmanned turret so if you shoot the gun or the turret of this vehicle, it'll do very minor damage to it. It'll only do about 150 to 200 damage for your shell. Instead of the usual, if you shoot the hull, it'll do about a trillion damage and do metric ass tons of crit damage. The turret is quite a nice thing to do. So going hull down on this machine is also quite effective. Coupled with the good penetration, the good damage, the good rate of fire, accuracy of the gun, you do get quite a good machine. Not to say the turret, if you take enough hits, it will do a lot of damage. It will knock out the autoloader, and it will knock out all those sorts of vehicle, uh, vehicles. It will knock out the gun, it will knock out the autoloader, and generally make the thing harder to play. But it, the expeditionary tank doesn't sort of play like a light tank. It's more like an AFV. It's really useful to get to know your tank. Don't 
come out of this video and expect you like take on board my tips and don't expect to be an absolute pro instantly you've got to know your vehicle that you're playing so if you're playing an mbt and it doesn't re like the mbt 70 good armor but it's very mobile it doesn't really play like an mbt too much and as we see here i'm going to be a proper light tank and i'm going to go afv hunting load in a heat round because i know that my heat round if it strikes the fox will kill him instantly so we're going to try and hunt him down using our good mobility where is he F but firing on third person is a bit more difficult i don't get the fox unluckily but he's dead so that's all right but we're going to have to respond to the threat there's loads of us up the top of the map and we are completely destroying that flank but down below we have two uh two leopard two avs and an rdf lt these vehicles are pushing the flank all we have is an xm1 t72a and an rdf lt that vfm mark 5 we just shot at will be seeing us later so we're going to come round. we're going to finish off this leopard there we go heat round straight through the bag finish off this leopard with a heat round but i make a mistake my heat round goes into his side and i do not aim at his rear while he's turning big mistake there i have to change to an ap round hope i pen his lower plate the penetration marker was yellow indicating that i might penetrate but the penetration marker on his side is green always try and scan your enemies for your pen green penetration markers if not take the risk on the yellow come round, finish off the mbt 70 and oh boy here comes the vfm mark 5 ignore him get to the friendlies the friendlies are way more helpful at trying to deal with him than i am i'm a one shot kill put another round into his drive wheel use the t72a as cover there we go saved our ass there that vfm might have finished us off but the t72 on much more hp much more armor slapped with era all over the front that thing will be able to easily take the vfm shot so we used our guy to save us our t72a and we're going to use our mobility of our light tank now to go on a little flanking mission we can see that there are plenty of vehicles on the enemy team that have zero armor bmp3 bradley rdf the two acacias we can all use heat rounds against them and i know there's two acacias here so i've loaded a heat round for them but i will be changing to ap in a minute i'll tell you why there's the acacias try and knock out the lower hp one but we don't do it he's on 112 hp the other one's still on full hp now should i go should i not should i wait is anyone coming back because looking at the mini map which will we can try and read off of we can see that there are plenty of afvs a bradley an rdf and a bmp3 that are not spotted and we probably could have been noticed and they could be coming back so i'm going to load an ap round for them because i know the bradley and the bmp have era as i explained era does negate heat and there's the bmp3 with era still intact on his front a heat round there could have done nothing to him if i was very very unlucky so i've loaded an ap round for them but the bmp3 is dead we can load in a heat round because we know the bradley's far away and the rdf and the akatsia get no form of composite sort of era protection of heat rounds or shape charge rounds come round rdf much bigger threat to us knock him out the akatsia yeah it's an artillery at peace at close range finish him off like that with a heat round bradley he's miles away he's got a center and a bmp3 to deal with and he is dead i hope i've taught you some quite nice things about this game i hope i've may have taught you some lessons that'll help you improve your gameplay situational awareness reading your mini map sniping tips brawling tips tips about shells armor tips such as multipliers for shape charge ap and he shell types i didn't actually go into he did i so he rounds will usually do damage they might not depending on the armor thickness they have a thing called an armor threshold so what this means is they'll only do damage to the tank within that armor so say if it's 20 to 100 millimeters of armor the he round will damage if the armor thickness is about 150 the he round will do nothing it will make it might damage the gun or blow a bit of air off but it won't actually do any hull damage to the vehicle so try and aim for bits with your ap rounds in between those armor thresholds so it's all about learning your vehicles so knowing where to shoot, knowing weak spots, knowing weaker bits of armor, knowing like modules, era bits, what tanks to fire at and what not to. That's a key, key lesson to learn. The tanks. Learn the stats. It will come to you over time. Don't sit there in your garage trying to learn the stats. It will come to you over time during your gameplay. And that's exactly how I learned this game. From the alpha, I learned the vehicles, but I transferred my skills from World of Tanks over. So I had a little bit of a head start there. So guys, 
thank you for watching this tips and tricks video i want to hear your feedback tell me how you thought it went tell me if it helped you at all and as always thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one